I was talking with someone recently and they were uh, struggling with hearing God's voice and uh, I can identify with that. I think it's uh, when you love someone, you're drawn to want to please them. You're drawn to want to uh, connect, to be engaged, to have this reciprocal relationship where you know what you're doing is pleasing to them. When one of the people came to Jesus, he asked a great question. What, how, what, which law is the most important one? Uh, another way of asking that question is, how do I know what the will of God is? How do I walk into a relationship with him and please him? And that's healthy, not please him so that he might love us, but we are loved and our response is that we might please him. And <clears throat> a lot of times I, as I'm talking with people, I get confused with this and really uh, it's kind of my story as well. Uh, in one group that I spent many years working with, there was a lot of emphasis on hearing God. And that's, that's that connection point where we're trying to figure out how do I respond to God? And it's hearing God. And the challenge when we talk about this is we're looking through a filter. And that filter is what often gets us into trouble, not just with this question, but anytime we're reading the Bible, we're, we're looking through a filter out of which we're interpreting the Bible. And this question of how do I please God? How do I respond to his love for me? is a really important fundamental question. And for many years, mine was rooted in fear. And when I heard this teaching on hearing God, I thought, well, I need to hear God. And it, I pulled it into my fears. And, and, and I, you know, all these, this process of trying to figure out, how do I please him? Because that's what hearing God was. How do I please him? How do I keep him from being miffed at me? How do I keep him from not being angry with me? How do I keep him from not being disappointed in me? because I knew what was in me. So after years, I went back and began to look at what does God say? What's the scripture say about this? And I, 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 as I worked through this, I realized that I had brought a limiting view to this whole teaching on hearing God. It wasn't in what the teacher said, it was my interpretation of it. My fears, interpreted it through the wrong grid. And when we talk about hearing God, what we've got to do is stand back and look at the modalities, the, the ways we gain interaction with people. And there's basically three ways education will teach you. Auditory, visual, and kinesthetic. Those three ways, uh, information access points, connection points, we hear something, we're connected through the auditory. We see something, we're connected to it through the visual. We, we experience something, we're connected to it through the kinesthetic. And as I began to look through um, the Word of God, I began to realize that God doesn't limit His ability to engage us with one access point. Now, that's a long way of saying. God doesn't limit himself to speaking to us through auditory means. Now, this is important, particularly if you're not an auditory person. Because if you're an auditory person, all your language is, well, what did you hear? Um, it's all woven through that, the language of the ears. What if you're a visual person? And you would say, well, this is what I saw, but what you saw isn't what you heard. And when you glorify one access point, which can quickly happen, what you, what you do is you, you limit then your capacity to interact with God in a more holistic way. So what I had done, because I honestly, I didn't hear God. It's not the way I was wired. And I always felt a bit guilty, a bit, can I even use the word shameful, a bit like I'm gonna disappoint him. Like, and, and so this, this modality that I had, this ability to hear just wasn't the way I was wired. And, and as I began to study the Bible, you begin to see, so for instance, in at least five times it says in the Gospels, usually in Matthew, it says, and Jesus was moved with compassion. And what you realize is that the compassion that Jesus had is what was moving him. Now notice it doesn't say when Jesus had compassion, he went back and got the word of the Lord. 
See, now that's really confusing. The word of the Lord, the word of the Lord is an auditory language. It's, the, it's highlighting hearing God. But what we need to also say is um, we need to go back and get the heart of God. We need to go back and get the experience, the wholeness of God each of those different dynamics. And what God wants for us is to be free in our relationship. He wants us to be able to, if we're auditory, hear God. He wants us, if we're visual, to be able to see God. And he wants us, if we're kinesthetic, which is, which is we learn by through experiencing him, to feel him. And, and this, our goal, remember, isn't to hear God. That's just kind of one dimensional. Our goal isn't to either to visually see God or to experience God. That's two dimensional. Our goal is to abide with God. And his abiding presence, as we bring more holistic freedom to us, um, in, it pulls through all aspects of who we are so that we hear things that God uses. We, we see things that God uses. It says of Jesus, looking upon the fields, seeing that the fields um, were ripe, he said. So he sees things and then he responds to what he sees. He feels things and then he responds to what he feels. He hears things and then he responds to these things. All of these things are ways of God communicating with us. Now the last, the third one, the kinesthetic one is a little bit tricky uh, and I like it because it, it, it really kind of pushes you because Here's, here's the challenge. Kinesthetic people learn by doing. And yet if you ascribe to uh, the idea that you have to have the word of the Lord before you do anything, it becomes very confusing for a kinesthetic learner who once they're doing it, you know, in the chariots of fire, he, he says, Eric Little, he said, I feel God's presence when I'm Something about doing it, communicating the abiding presence of God in his life. Now, I would say it this way. We need faith for whatever we do. That which is a, not of faith is sin. So the question isn't rooted in this obedience as if I have to know before I do it. A kinesthetic learner has to have the faith that God's in it, and then they engage it, and then they feel God's presence through it and know that it is the will of God. And what I, uh, what I think is really important is, that, is Jesus came to give us freedom. Jesus came to give us life, abundant life. And that life means that we're not stuck in one modality, one aspect of God of being able to engage us, either through our hears or through what we see, but also through what we do. And, and it says, ask, seek. And knock and what I find fate fascinating ask and you shall receive seek and you shall find knock and the door shall be open with you ask auditory seek visual knock kinesthetic he gives access to the three different ways that God can speak to us now does that mean all of our feelings are right no any more than all the voices I hear in my head are God does that mean we get to do whatever we will want? No, because we're called to a life of faith. We're called to a life of trusting God in whatever we do. But what, I, what I'm reminded of today, just felt stirred to put this on, is that God wants us to be free. He, his goal is not to get us to do something. His goal is to get us to be something in the abiding presence of God so that as we express him in our life, he shows up. I trust that gives you a little freedom, a chance to be able to stand back and go into my being legalistic. Am I stuck in a cultural mode? Am I stuck in a modality or a, a, a access point that isn't mine? And God, how do I grow this and develop this so that my relationship with you, which is always unique, because God works with us as we are. This relationship I have with you, I want to be able to trust you that when I'm leaning into a feeling and put faith in that process, you moving through that feeling. When I'm leaning into a visual, that I put faith that you're using this to stir me. When I put faith in what I hear, or I might just put faith that there's something going on here and I don't even have the words for it, but I, I sense in my spirit, whatever language that is, 
I'm going to do it because what I want is the presence of God, this abiding joy in him, in this relationship where I'm responding to his love in my life. Why? Because I'm his son and I am free. And he whom the son sets free is free indeed. God bless you.